What's going on? It's your boy Sermon at Sermon's Domain on Twitter. 50 Cent is back with the Conan tape. It's his first mixtape in about three years. The last one he deals with DJ Drama titled The Lost Tape. And I already know he's uh, preparing another tape called Reloaded that'll probably drop sometime in 2016. And, you know, 50, 50 seems a little bit hungry. Um, he's leading up to his next album called Street King Immortal. And it's showing that he's trying to build up that buzz for it. And the Conan tape is a good starting point. It's a short mixtape, but when you look at 50 Cent's discography, a lot of a lot of his uh, stuff in the last, you know, five years have been really short. It's like, you know, 10, 11, 12 songs, and that's pretty much all you get out of 50. And, you know, the Conan tape is only uh, seven songs total. And the, the one thing that I thought was cool about this leading up to the release was that he was working with Atlanta producers. You got Sunny Digital on the project, and... Um, that record in particular is pretty much just like a remake of a record that Sunny Digital had put out in 2014 with the same title. So it was interesting that like 50 decided to remake that. Like how did that conversation come together? Um, aside from Sunny Digital, you got London on the track, you know, who's, who's, uh, did a lot of stuff with Young Thug. And then you have, um, and then I think that's it for the, the Atlanta producers. But then you have a Tennessee producer by the name of Band Play. Um, he's done stuff with Young Buck, Starlito, um, and, you know, several other names. And I thought he was a good addition. The one name that I remember 50 Cent was talking about uh, that he worked with that wasn't on this project was uh, TM88. So I was wondering, like, if the record that they did was, like, is, is that going to be on, like, Reloaded? Or is it uh, good enough to make the long-awaited Street King Immortal? I don't know. We'll have to find out. Um, the project is good. I think 50 Cent is finally making some interest in music now. Not to say that he was in the past, but I think I'm more interested now than I was, you know, when he dropped The Lost Tape. The Lost Tape just kind of came and went. I know 50 Cent fans probably loved it. Um, but it's also, at the same time, it's also weird to hear 50 Cent rap like he did, you know, a decade ago. I'm not talking about, like, you know, I'm not talking about the sound or the flow. I'm talking about, like, the subject matter. A lot of the stuff that he's rapping about now is stuff that he's rapped about his entire career. And I think, I don't know, it gets to a point where it's hard to, you know, continue to appreciate and really enjoy it. Because, like, 50 Cent is 40 now. It's hard to believe that you're still, you know, rapping about drugs and you know, stuff of that nature. So that's the only, that's my only issue with the project. Um, and that's not to take away from how good it sounds because it's really good. It's really well put together. I feel like 50 is, is rapping, you know, exceptional on here. And I don't know. I just feel like, you know, it's hard for somebody like 50 to adapt. You know, what is, what is 50 Cent supposed to rap about nowadays? You know, I get that. That's that's the, the main issue. And I don't know. But I, I had to bring that point up. I had to talk about it. Um, I was excited to see some guest features because I know the back cover didn't have um, guest features listed. So it was good to see Young Buck, Lil Boosie on a record together. I like that record a lot. It's probably one of my standouts. I feel like Buck is sounding really good. I know he dropped a mixtape today that I'm excited to listen to. Um, but I like the fact that like Buck kind of included his little BG shout out. We, me and Boosie just trying to help BG get through his 14. Because um, I was just thinking about BG recently on Twitter. You know, I was talking about like, damn, he doesn't get out. I believe it's 2026 is when he gets out. That's a hell of a long time unless he gets, you know out on good behavior uh, early you know parole and whatnot so i don't know we'll see but i thought that was cool i think boosie killed it. i think all three of them just you know sound good together it wasn't like a forced collaboration speaking of forced collaborations we got post malone he's the only other guest feature well besides sunny digital which i already named and um trying to fuck me over Produced by Scoop DeVille is the record that Post Malone is on. And I gotta say, I just don't like Post Malone. I've given him multiple chances. And I feel like this collaboration just didn't add anything. Um, and I think it, it drags it down too. Because now that I think about it, it's like, I don't even remember really caring about 50 Cent's verse in the, in the song. Because Post Malone is just, you know, terrible. 
So I think that was, you know, the other thing that I really didn't like. Um, and I wanted to say, where is G-Unit? Just this little point. It's not even about this tape. Just in general, where is G-Unit? They started off having such a strong presence uh, last year in the summer when they reunited. And then they put out, you know, the, uh, the, the Independence EP. And then they put out one earlier this year in March. And then it kind of just dissolved from there. I was expecting, like, the third G-Unit album. Um, so I don't know. I was wondering where that went, what happened with that situation. I guess that's a whole other discussion in itself. But I hope we find out soon if there's going to be anything or if it's just going to be a dip set situation where they reunite for a little bit and then they're done. Now I have three questions for you guys, the viewers. Um, how do you feel about 50 Cent's career in 2015? Let me know. And then uh, number two, what other producers do you think 50 Cent should work with? I like the fact that he kind of branched out, worked with some Atlanta producers, and then he kind of, you know, stick to people he's worked with in the past, like Alchemist and Scoop DeVille. Um, that really helped the project. And last question, are you anticipating Street King Immortal? It's been in the works for a long time. I remember, I think he was talking about it since like, what, 2012? That's almost three years, four years now. So, are you anticipating it more after listening to this project? Let me know in the comment section below. And uh, subscribe to the channel if you're not already. Share the video. Follow me on Twitter at Summers Domain. Like the video, of course. And as always, thank you for your time. I appreciate you for watching. And until next time, peace.